right. Gavin Agnew making his way to the ring, another Indianapolis guy. Yeah, Gavin is originally from Callaway County, Kentucky. Oh, but, really? Yeah, he moved up to Indianapolis for work. He's been training with the Indianapolis 10th Planet a lot. Gavin's just a beast. Making his pro debut here tonight. Did he really? Yes. Huh. 26 years old. Had an eight and seven amateur record, I believe. Started training MMA when he was 22. Of course, he grew up as a wrestler. He was briefly on the NAIA wrestling team in college. Yeah, he had to wrestle for uh, Lindsey Wilson. Okay. His coaches are Austin Tweedy, Dustin Parrish, and Anthony Hill. his debut against an opponent who was an 8-0 amateur and a 1-0 professional. What do you mean by that? You mean Gavin Agnew only fights difficult opponents? Yes, 100%. We've got to give all of our props to those guys like we have all night, and Gavin Agnew is one of them. That's not looking to run or hide from anybody. Tantamount to Ken Beverly, who made his pro debut against 4-0 Hugh Parks. Headed to the cage now is Dustin Short. He trains at AFS Academy in Richmond, 10th Planet Richmond, under Professor Scott Elliott. He's coming out to Wheeler Walker Jr., okay? What Dustin said is Wheeler Walker is true country music. <laughs> he said it's not the auto-tuned pop country like Luke Bryan or Florida Georgia Line. He said it's it's real country music. So, so he's serious about his country music, you can tell. He's an old school country music fan, apparently. I wonder if Wheeler Walker's here tonight. Wheeler's from Lexington. <laughs> is he really? Yeah, uh, and also it's not his real name and it's a comedic persona. Ah. <laughs> Regardless, Dustin Short is a big fan of Wheeler Walker Jr. Well, I will tell you this, uh, I did for the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, um, they had a, like a tryout, and Dustin Schwartz was in attendance here. He's trying to do some bare knuckle boxing, nice. so I would definitely look for him to want to throw some punches here and keep this fight on his feet as much as possible. Yeah, Dustin's fighting out of AFS Academy. He's been with that gym for so long. One I, of the best gyms in the entire state, hands down. Been there for, I think, 25 years or something. Wow, that's yeah. insane. I encourage our viewers to follow Dustin on Instagram at Short Dustin. <laughs> Short, Short Dustin. Dustin. Short Dustin. Simple and straightforward. Once again, Dustin has been training with Scott Elliott off and on since he was five years old. Wow. And I have heard comparisons from Dustin Short to one Chris Lytle. Nice. Uh, well, I hope he's uh, better than Chris Lytle. <laughs> <laughs> It's hard to be better than Chris Lytle. Uh, now you're just being crazy. You're both fans and enthusiasts of the bare, bare knuckle. Absolutely. Both got the same haircut. Got yeah. the beard going right now. Big right hand there. Dustin Short with the good World High Boxing Association stance. 
And you can tell he's just throwing all his punches with bad intentions right yeah. now. And this is where Gavin has shined in his amateur career. Putting guys on the cage, making it a dirty clinch fight, dragging you down, staying on top and punching you. You know, and we talked about how tiring that is, especially in a five minute round fight. That should kind of benefit the guy who is doing the pushing, not the guy who is being pushed. Good shrug there from Dustin Short. We reset. He's ready to go back and throw some more heavy hands. Good low kick there from Dustin Short. But Gavin's been taking his Muay Thai more seriously himself. He's taken a couple Muay Thai fights before turning professional. And I always think that's a good idea, getting in there, either doing Muay Thai or professional boxing, something where you can't go to the ground and you just get forced to go in there and, and commit on all your skills. It's good to do grappling matches as well for the same reason. Especially all of us, we're all guilty uh, wrestlers. You f when everything goes wrong, you, you, s you can just fall back on your wrestling. Yeah, you resort back to what you know the most. Yeah. Well, good take down right yeah. there. Good lift from Kevin right there. That was a good job of just waiting for the right time, and he waited until he felt the pressure wasn't there when, when Short was trying to do a move, and he, and he got behind and capitalized on it. Yeah, Gavin's very keen on that. He's got such good mat sense. But Dustin Short is uh, in this 10th planet jujitsu system. They got all kinds of funky stuff from their half guard. Like I said, I've never been a huge fan of the half guard in MMA for the reason we talked about earlier. It's great in jiu-jitsu, but when a guy starts punching you in that spot, it makes it much hard to do these reverses and sweeps when a guy's punching you right in the middle. Absolutely. Gavin doing a good job of holding on to this wizard, making Dustin pay with those short elbows. Yeah, like he's trying to do the sweep right now we talked about. He's putting his own arm underneath there, trapping his own arm. What are you going to do about this elbow that's hitting you in the face? Or at least right now, pushing your face away. So wow. Right there, that's that's <laughs> what you do when you try and go for those. Oh, jeez. Uh, he, uh, these one of those is going to cut him open. If he does, he's not already cut open by now. Wow. I'd be surprised. Yeah, he's cut. I, I believe. I, think I don't he, see. I think he's cut over his left eye. Okay. Okay. Well, if not, he's got some awful tough skin because he landed a couple really good elbows right there. Gavin, see, once you, again, trying the jujitsu moves. Yep, you're right, he does have a little cut on the eye. Relatively minimal compared to what it could have been uh, with uh, those agreed, elbows. Agreed, yeah. That could have been pretty nasty. But if he keeps putting him that self in that spot, it's going to get bigger. Yeah, and this is where you cannot be when you're fighting oh, Gavin Agnew. There, and there's a, some another, more good elbows right there. Gavin Agnew jumping right in the pro game, Alex, and throwing elbows. He's like, okay, I can do this. Yeah. I fought Gavin Agnew before, and I was on bottom. And I remember literally thinking, in the middle of a fight, I would be screwed if it was pro right now. Because <laughs> yeah, the position that he's in right now, he has been doing this his entire well, amateur career. And to be honest with you, from that position, it's very difficult to throw effective right, uh, punches. Yeah, you, 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 you can't put any power on them. So but the short elbow? The elbows are perfect from that spot. Yeah. So, oh, wow, wow, another elbow. And Dustin Short is eating them, but he is staying with it. Looks like Dustin might be getting ready to turn and give up his back here. Gavin's just doing such a good job of riding so tough. Passing him out there. In this five-minute round. Yeah, Gavin's going to try to take the back here. About 20 seconds left. Short time, Gavin. Come on. Here. Good job by Short uh, of this tying up the arms a little bit. Uh, Gavin's going to uh, try for this choke. Only a few seconds left. He's got to hold on, but he's in a very difficult spot. Short's right turning now. purple. Wow. Ooh, I thought Short might go out. Yeah, he he was close there. That was that was a tough spot for him to be in. Agnew won the first round. Yeah, great first round. You for you might call that one a 10-8 based on how they score it from now on. I believe it's possible. A lot of times they're counting not just damage but control time. If you're doing that a majority of the rounds, so.
You know, you can tell Short's definitely uh, the harder striker right here, so I'd like to see him do what he can to try and keep it outside, throw punches and stay away, not clinch up as much, try and make it to where if it does clinch up, he works on getting out, not trying to push the guy around. So despite being the shorter of the two, no pun intended. Yeah. Yeah, but. He needs to keep it on his feet. For sure, I, I would want him to keep it on his feet. You know, he can work his way inside, throw punches, but don't smother your punches where you get grabbed. And, and if the guy does try to grab you, make sure you create space, get back out and work your way back in and throw heavy punches again. He has to throw, every time he throws punches, they gotta be hard punches, because you're only looking for one of those good ones to hit. Yeah, the problem here is that Gavin is the taller and the longer of the two fighters, but he's winning the grappling as well. Exactly. So that presents a big, big problem. Wow. wow. Good, Good hips right there. Oh boy. He just great, tossed him. Great whip over there by Dustin. And he just threw him. We get to see now with the top position if Dustin Short wants to try to return the favor from those elbows. Yeah, absolutely. If I was him, I would. Evan's really good at reclaiming his guard. It's hard to keep him down. We'll see if Dustin can do it. Kevin trying to use the fence to push his self in a better position right there. He's, he's going to look to push off and really explode and get on, on top if he can. Yeah, and he really can't let Dustin posture up here because he, he's in that half guard that we've been talking about. Yep. Work in the dog fight position. And he's trying to push off where he can get full guard right there, but every time he does that, he runs the risk of taking a right or a left hand. Possibly setting up some type of a, a choke. And he's really trying to get that choke right now. Looks like it's going to be difficult for him to get at this point. He's got the leg there. Ah. Dustin Schwartz with the there's elbows. There's the elbows yeah, we Dustin talked was about. Those elbows. Yep, well up. And now Gavin's in the best spot with his head on the cage. Training under crew Scott Elliott. You know, Dustin Short is no stranger to elbows. No, not at all. And now Gavin's got these butterfly hooks to see if he can elevate Dustin. Yeah, or he might try and get to where he can work a triangle choke in there or something. I think we're going to see Gavin use this to stand up. And that's a great map, exactly, exactly what you said. Thus far, Dustin's winning the second round. Yeah. And oh, clearly, just dominating. And Gavin's corner let him know that. Yeah, they said, we need something from you this round. We need to see something. Yeah, it's about halfway. Gavin can still fight back and and have a chance to win this round, but he's got to do a lot. Well, for, fortunately for Gavin, a lot of times, if you only even just win the last minute of the round, a lot of times that's the last impression the judges have, you win, the, win that round. That's how MMA judging works sometimes. And now Gavin in this front headlock position, he's really good here. Three five minute rounds, it'll be interesting to see if the potential for a 10-8 round in that first round comes into play. Yeah, Gavin trying to pass right around and take the back. Dustin doing the smart thing and conceding and trying to reclaim some of his guard. Gets to this half guard though. Now, if I'm Gavin right now, I know I lost the first half of the round. I have to do something right now to create some damage. I want to land some more of those elbows and he's doing a good job of getting the mount right here. Yeah, Gavin's hips are so strong. He's gonna use it to maybe threaten the neck here. He's got a, got a good one-arm guillotine choke right now, but I think he needs to do more damage and go for a choke that might not work. Yeah, Dustin was in that little quarter guard there on, on Gavin's right leg, but he reclaimed the half. Back to the elbow game. Yeah, and then this is where Gavin shines. Now he's throwing elbows to the body and then working on throwing elbows to the head as well. And this is all about getting that right leg out. Gavin's working to get that leg out. We can get the full mount. Dustin saying not a chance. I'm keeping this in half guard. Yeah, but now Gavin doing a good job of scooting it back head on the cage. This is a really bad spot for Dustin. But at the same time, I feel like he has to do a little bit of damage here in order to have a chance to win this round. Absolutely. But 
there's still a significant amount of time, I think, if Gavin rides this out as Dustin scrambles up. Wow. Good scramble right there. Turns into an interesting round with about 30 seconds left. Absolutely. First half of the round, Dustin was controlling. Trying a hip throw. Doesn't look like he quite has it. Yeah, I would look for a good knee to the head right here. Gavin, time, Gavin. Short time, Gavin. Gavin, uh, no. Hip throw there, attempt from Dustin. Gavin with that snatch single. Dustin fends it off. Got a good knee, the, oh, good knee right there. And for another guillotine, seems like he keeps getting good submissions at the end of the round. Wow, and Dustin Short is ready to throw. Both these guys are ready to throw. <sighs> that made it a much more difficult round to score, did it not? Yeah, I mean, the first one was definitely all Gavin. The second one in the air. See if anything we said earlier might come, you know, true as far as, you know, whoever's winning the last half of the round has a better chance of winning that, I think. So. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Three five-minute rounds. We have one round left. Now, I, I would say if I if I'm in you know Dustin Short's corner, I'm I'm saying we don't know. You could have won one of those, but you can't count on that. You got to go for the finish. Agreed. You could be down. You could be down 0-2 very possibly, or 0-3. Really, you know, yeah, 0-2 you know, so. uh, with one of them even being a 10-8 round. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. So yeah. you, you might be way down. You might need. Uh, yeah, it could very well be 20 to 17 at this point. Yeah. And I, I'm lucky enough to have been able to interact with Crew Scott and Crew Adam. I, I know that that's what he's, that, that they are telling Dustin right now. They know what's up. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah Dustin's a smart man himself. He knows what he has to do. Yep. Hey, then they're going to touch hands. Good show of sportsmanship there at the beginning of the third and final round. Yeah, you'll never get a bad word out of Gavin. That was good by Gavin. I think when you're dealing with a striker like that, coming with some straight kicks to the midsection, some keeps, very good. Not, not as worried about the takedown, man. Dustin doing a good job of walking Gavin down. Gavin trying to time, leap, leap inside. Good hips from Gavin. I will say Gavin's had a very good game plan for this fight. He's, he's kept long, and every time that Dustin tries to close that gap, he's clinched him. It makes it difficult for him to get off too many good punches. Gavin's a fairly tall 170. You know? Very tall. How tall is it, do you think? 6'3". Uh, oh, that's, that's pretty good size. Uh, yeah. good. So we see the guillotine attempt there by Dustin. We uh, are in agreement that he knows he needs to finish the fight. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, ordinarily, I would say not a good idea with that much time left to, to pull guard. But, I mean, I I if you're down, you have to start doing some Hail Marys at some point. Yeah. Might have been a little early for it, but if he felt like he had it, I have no problem with it. Yeah, you have to shoot your shot. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, you went for it. It didn't work. Now you got to work on getting up or getting out of this and trying to make something else happen. Yeah, and underneath Gavin is not where you want to be. Nice, nice sweep. That was a big, I mean. Good. Scissor sweep. It didn't quite work out the way he wanted, but it was a beautiful first attempt at it. Yeah, but the hips prevail. Gavin recovered so quick, yeah. like a cat right there. Looks like Gavin's going to drive that knee to the mat there. Yep. Got, got the straight. full mount right now. This is a difficult spot right now. Gavin might just want to give up his back and push his head against the fence and try and work his way up. Otherwise, he's just going to lose the fight. Looked like Gavin was threatening that arm lock. Dustin's, Dustin's out, Dustin's out, he's out, he's out. Was he not? He looks like he's about to be if he wasn't. He's, he gave a thumbs up. Wow. That's what hours of working with Adam Fritz and Scott Elliott with the defense, wow, is he out? Looked like he just closed his eyes and went to that happy place of trying to just maintain until he could yeah. get out. But he's not out. No, no, he no. He looks That's like it, wow. but he's not. Yeah. <laughs> he is not out. He is intelligently defending himself. Two minutes, 15 seconds left in the fight. <laughs> Dustin could have won the second round. They could be tied. Yeah, but the first and... Uh, 
appearing the third. Wow, he just feel it really putting it on him right now. He keeps trapping his arms and he's just hitting him to the face with no, no ability to stop it. Yeah, and if Gavin starts turning those punches into elbows. Man, I, I do have to be honest, I'm very impressed with Dustin Short's ability to not bleed. Yeah. I, I don't know how you do that. I wish I could work on that <laughs> myself because I, I tend to bleed a lot more. Got another choke attempt. He's going yeah, for he's right now. This is pretty choke. nasty right now. Yeah. And he finished him with it. Yeah. Nice. Wow, what a debut, huh? Jeez. Very tough. Yeah, like, like we talked about, I think his game plan was this show good. He came in, he didn't give us uh, the ability to, to land those big punches and did what he had to do. Gavin Agnew won in the third round via arm triangle choke. And Dustin did tap out, is what they said. We appreciate everyone tuning in to HR MMA 108, live here at Heritage Hall in Lexington, Kentucky. A lot of excitement right now around the B2 Digital Fighting Series. I said I got a text earlier.